morning now I'm going to discuss to you for this uh, tutorial about the design of one with lab using the British standard or a BS 8110 so in the start of the design we have to check uh, considerations on like load combinations. so uh, these are the most uh, or the common load combinations uh, factors so you have for dead load uh, adverse is 1.4 for dead and imposed uh, you have for impost this is 1.6 for the wind you have also 1.4 here and now uh, if you have dead and wind you have 1.2 1.2 and then and then 1.2 so in American standards we say instead of uh, impost load we have uh, live load okay so uh, some considerations that we have in the descent of one slab we compute the minimum effective depth which is D which is equal to the span and then the basic ratio the basic ratio depends on the type of your uh, support so if you have cantilever you have 7 simply support is 20 and then continuous you have 26 okay the modification factor which I'm, which I'm going to present to you, you all later but we can at the first stage of your uh, design procedure you can just assume first a certain value closer to or close to the one that you are going to calculate later say 1.4 1.39 okay so there are some considerations that we have to consider in uh, British uh, British standard it's easier than some other standards because you just have to use this uh, formula of course there are uh, derivations uh, from this but uh, could be easily used so you have here for the ultimate moment or the capacity of the, your structure and then of course the area required or area requirement out of your design moment m and then take note if your mu or your capacity should be bigger than the design moment okay because the capacity or the ultimate moment moment or the resistant moment of the slab otherwise if uh, m is greater than mu then the case would be like in the co a double reinforced beam by which you need a compression reinforcement and then one thing that you have to check after calculation AS is to check the minimum requirement of your AS okay, or the area of the steel so if you're using if Y 250 you only have 0.24 percent of AC or the area of the concrete area of the concrete is just the thickness okay and then the width of the slab which uh, Mostly we're using, considering just a 1 meter width of the slab. And then you have 0.13% if your FY is equal to 500. Now you also have to check the shear, which if your uh, shear value or the shear stress is less than the allowable or the VC, then there's no requirement. Otherwise, if it falls on this range and the other one, you have to calculate with, with this uh, formula. Okay? So... Uh, and the shear values, so the allowable uh, shear stress according to British standard for FCU equals to 25 megapascal. Then you just have to use this table, okay? Again, this is uh, different in the case of the American standard because in the American standard you have the formula or uh, specific values of your allowable uh, shear stress. So you are going to compute the 100 AS over BD. For example, your value is 0.25. And then if your spacing that you have computed is 150, then you have 0.51. That is if your FCU is 25 megapascal. But if your FCU is, let us say, 30 megapascal, for example, this one, then you have to get the particular proportion. So you just have 30 over 25 to the power of uh, one third, and then get that value, which is 0.51 here. And then you can compute now this uh, design concrete shear stress, which is 0.54. This is what you are going to uh, compare later with your actual shear uh, stress so uh, these are the in the table 3.1 some concrete uh, compression strength classes that you have to select depending on the structure that you are going to design and then also for your strength of your enforcement you just have two types you have 250 megapascal or the 500 megapascal and then of course in the start of your design you have to check from your floor plan of your from design uh, considerations what uh, would be the impost load or or the live load that you are going to consider if it is a uh, dwelling units if it is some dining room it's 2.0 and so on so forth bedrooms is just 1.5 or mostly for uh, one-way slab we have 
in the stairs or in the hallway, you have a 3.0. Okay, now that's uh, that could be different when you have the type 3 of your imposter, which is from hotels and motels. Okay, so take, take note about it. Now, in this uh, tutorial that I'm going to uh, introduce to you, we just have this uh, one load combination only for the dead load and the impost load. Okay, so for example, you have here one spanning. Uh, or de designing a one-way slab or one spanning concrete floor so it's given here the impost load is 4 uh, kilopascal uh, that is between brick walls as shown here like this, this is the support and then the floor is exposed to class XC1 assuming the following material strength your FCU is uh, 35 megapascal and your FY is 500 megapascal okay so for the purpose of of these tutorials you have Again, as I said, the first thing that you're going to do is to come up with your design criteria, which I've already here presented. Your FCU, your FY, your live load or your post load, and then your load calculations. Okay. So for, for here, oh, the depth of the slab and the main steel area is the first that you're going to check or to calculate. As per the formula, you have the span. Here is 4250. And then basic ratio. Okay. This is simply supported, so you can use 20. Okay. This one. And then this we are going to consider rectangular sections, okay? Just like the the beam modes. Then we can assume 1.4. So the, our uh, effective depth uh, minimum is 152 millimeter, but then we can just make it 155, or if you like, you can make it 160, okay? So for uh, this type of exposure class, we can have the concrete cover of 25 millimeter. So the total edge or the total thickness is just D one half of the diameter of the reinforcement uh, for the slab the minimum uh, main reinforcement diameter is 10 millimeter so just have one half of it and then the concrete cover which is 25 meaning you can come up with this 185 millimeter the total thickness or h okay so how do you compute the dead load so you just multiply the thickness which is uh, 185 millimeter divided by 1000 that becomes 185 uh, yeah. 0.1 into 5 meter okay so this one is already in meter okay so this is the unit weight of the slab then you can come up with this answer this is kilo newton square meter or it's the same as kilo pascal okay the total impost load it's already given and the type of the occupancy and then we consider one meter width take note in the slab so for, for example this is the slab okay we always consider just one meter this is the design of uh, slab is just like rectangular beam but since the slab is quite a uh, big as a bigger value in terms of width we only consider the one meter width okay so we substitute JK we calculated already 4.44 and then the post load which is 4 kilopascal multiply it by this width of the slab which is one meter and then the span which is 4.25 meter okay then we calculate the descent moment since this is simply supported the uh, slab take note that you have w okay which w is already in kilonewton so we can use this formula okay so this is our w and this is the span or the l and then we can have this design moment our ultimate moment or the resistance moment of the uh, slab has this formula so from this formula b is uh, this is already millimeter okay uh, 1000 millimeter and this is also millimeter okay squared so uh, the value here is this one is newton millimeter convert it that becomes kilonewton meter okay just remove this one that becomes kilonewton meter with this 10 to the power of 6 the unit here is newton millimeter now i'll uh, take note that m which is this uh 28.5 is less than MU okay so meaning there is no compression enforcement otherwise if MU if this MU is like bigger than this or I should say if the M is bigger than MU meaning the resistance is not capable of resisting the design moment so there is a compression reinforcement which happened to be uh, I'm going to discuss that one in the double reinforced beam it doesn't happen actually in the slab so the main steel you have just this value k that you need to calculate for you to get for the value z okay so 
Now, take note of the Z when you have substituted this one D155 and in this one K, you have the value of okay, 155.9. This that becomes 148.8. You have to compare it to 0.95D, which is 147. So, here, okay, here you always compare these two and then you use the smaller one. Okay, so that's why Z will become 147. So, because that Z is necessary, so that Z is necessary here in calculating AS. Using this formula, we substitute this is the descent moment, which is Newton millimeter. Okay, 500 is also millimeter, 147 is also millimeter, meaning this is the required reinforcement. Okay, so from the table, as I is I uh, told you 10 for the main reinforcement of the slab, 10 uh, millimeter diameter should be the minimum one. From here, there is a closer one for 49, but uh, for safety, we just use 523. Okay, 449 and 446 is quite very close, but uh, uh, either way, 449 still satisfies the requirement of 446 uh, square millimeters, but then. Yeah, for this example, we can use this one. It's okay. But if you are going to use 449, that's also okay. Alright. So, uh, we check our actual modification factor because earlier we have we had the assumption of using 1.4. Now, we see, uh, using this formula, 5, 500 is the Fy, megapascal, and then this is the requirement. Earlier, we calculated it's 446. And this is the actual that we have uh, provided. Okay. See, here, we use 523 meaning that's the actual uh, uh, area of reinforcement then this value which is fs meaning the design service stress that, that's of the steel is to be substituted here and then the moment that we had 28.5 b is 1000 millimeter and then the effective depth which is 155 we had a value of 1.39 earlier we had an assumption of uh, using 1.4 so it's okay right uh, that our okay, this is the modification factor okay so when we take the compute the minimum d you have here for 250 this is the this, this is a simply supported and then the one that were calculated our new minimum d is 153 our assumption is 155 so it's fine okay uh, our assumption is still bigger okay this is the requirement we use 155 it's fine okay so in the A is minimum, since we are using FY here, take note, is equal to 500. We use 0 .13, 0 0.13, okay, percent. So since our FY is 500, then we use this formula, okay. Again, AC is just base, and then this is thickness, okay. So is that 185? So this is the minimum area reinforcement, which is less than our A's because our A is actually is 446, okay? The minimum is still 441, so that's fine. Okay, so how do you get the reinforcement uh, for the secondary steel? Secondary steel is the transverse direction. If this one is our main steel, secondary is going this one towards you, towards us, or the transverse, okay? So, you might be asking what is this 165? it's uh yeah one up to here okay 155 plus okay 155 and then another 10 it's 165 but anyway uh this is our 241 secondary steel requirement area let us check from here so we can use eight million this is only secondary so it's fine okay main bar should be at least at least 10 so for eight to 50 to 52 could meet the requirement of 241 we need 241 we, we give 252 that's fine okay so now we check the shear stress okay if you remember our load earlier is uh, simply supported okay this is 26.8 or w so this one is just w over 2 so this is the one okay so ra if this is a and this is b Okay, the reaction, this will be our shear force, which is this one, V. So this one, the actual shear stress, and then we have 1,000 millimeter, and then effective depth. So we have this, okay, requirement for our shear, okay. And now uh, the, 
the value of the allowable or permissible shear stress we need to compute this one to get from the table okay this is the one so we got this value of 1.169 so 0.169 is between 0.15 and 0.25 so it's somewhere here okay above 0.15 this is the one okay that we calculated earlier and then 155 it's it's fine to use 150 okay it's much uh, safe and then we need to value get this value somewhere here so we do interpolation so 0 0.25 minus 0 0.15 you have this one and then 0 0.51 minus 0 0.43 you have this one and that corresponding value of 0 0.169 0 0.15 has at 0 0.169 the corresponding value is vc and then 0 0.43 which is uh, this one okay so we have calculated 0 0.44 but then again as i said we have to multiply it by 30 over 25 because this uh, value of 0 0.44 is only when fy is 25 but since our fy uh, I should say FCU is 35 or f yeah 35 then it should be 35 uh, FCU is 30 okay so we are going to divide 30 over 25 okay so this will be our uh, like permissible or allowable uh, shear stress so since uh, V the one that we have calculated earlier is uh, was that 0 0.17 okay since V is 0.17, this one, less than 0.52, this satisfies this first condition. Meaning there is no requirement of your shear reinforcement, okay? What do we mean by shear reinforcement? In the beam that is stirrups, in the column that is lateral ties, okay? And then you have reinforcement details. Now, here you have 23 pieces of your secondary bars. So it's 1, 2, 3, and so on, 23. Your main bar uh, at that section you only have one, okay? We just see it's one, but you can, okay? Okay, spacing of 150. We're going to look at the section. Okay, this is one meter. So at 150, 150, 150, 150. So you have just have to divide one. Uh, for example, the total span is uh, yeah, just 1,000. 1,000 divide 150 plus one okay so for you to get the total number of pieces okay here we just presented the one piece for your main bar and it's fine for your details okay so you have to check also the spacing between bars it should be it should not exceed three times d this is three times the effective depth which is 155 it should not exceed then this or this one whichever is smaller so in our case, we have 150 and uh, secondary is 200 is fine. It's, it doesn't exceed this 465 and 750. For example, your spacing, just an example, is 800. It exceeds 750. It, this is greater than 750 and then greater than 465. So what are spacing you're going to use? You should use 465 just in case. Okay, if it's 800. This one, we have 150 and 200. It's fine. Okay crack you also have to check but for slab uh, it does not exceed for two a thickness of uh, 200 millimeter so it, it is not critical as to the the minimum crack width mostly we check the minimum crack width for for uh, beams okay so you need also to check deflection so deflection is just span what our span what is our span to 4 to 50 and an effective depth so this will this is the actual, okay? And the actual deflection. Now, what is the permissible? The value of the permissible is just basic ratio and then modification factor. Earlier, we already calculated, we mentioned that basic, uh, basic ratio for this uh, type, uh, slab is 20. This is simple supported, that's why it's 20. And then we calculated early, early, earlier the modification factor, which is 1.39, so you have here. So, the permissible is 27.8. Uh, our actual is 27.4 so that's fine it, we don't exceed the allowed value of your of deflection now what if our actual is greater than the permissible or the allowable so the approach is to increase the depth and then we redesign we start from the very beginning that is the case if your deflection exceeds than the permissible or allowable okay so i think that's all and uh if you have some 
issues, queries, clarifications, just drop your uh, questions in the comment section or you can send me email.